Good evening, everybody. This is the Thursday evening webinar for a uh, topic tonight is uh, one of a two-part series. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. How and where exactly to draw mid-bands for to take mid-band trades. First, we've got to knock out our standard disclaimer, and then we can get over to some charts. <clears throat> Excuse me, and look at trade setups. Sorry, I got a little tickle in my throat here tonight. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everybody in here does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. All right, with that out of the way, let's get over to screen one where we have a nice little roosty chart for you, teed up and ready to go. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do is this. I'm going to start off talking primarily about mid-band trades. But as the time goes on, I'm going to diverge from that a little and talk about other locations near the mid-band. So, I think it's important to first learn the mid-band trade itself and then as a good solid foundation and then we will expand out from there to look at other locations uh, around the mid-band. But before we do that, <clears throat> we've got to know, uh, for the most part, we've got to know what the current market condition is to decide what type of trade to take. And there are really three types of trades. So let's do a pop quiz here and make sure everybody's awake. I hear a little snoring out there, so we're gonna we're gonna pepper this webinar with little pop quizzes to make sure everybody, you know, your head doesn't hit the table. First quiz: What are the directions that a market can go? Just type it in. What directions can a market go? Any market. I'm going to give you 10 seconds on the clock. All these pop quizzes are going to be real fast, not sitting around for 10 minutes uh, yucking it up and having to talk about it. We're going to just like, you know, you got to just you got to know what the answer is and just bip it right into your to the uh, chat box there. <clears throat> I can help you with the hint, but I'm not going to do it. What are the directions that financial markets can go? Futures markets, forex markets, equity markets doesn't matter. They all have the same principles. All right, good. I see time's almost up. Five seconds. Okay, time's up. Good. All right. So, so, so here's here's how we're gonna here's how we're gonna address this. Okay. Oops. Let me get a text box up here. So markets can go up. Almost all of you got this. Up equals, help me out here, what do I put in for up trades? Short trades, right? Only. Short trades only in an uptrend. You fade the market, right? Market's going up, you fade it, peaks up, and then you short it, right? Help me out here. Is, this, is that right? <clears throat> up markets equal shorts only. So whenever a market comes up, like here, for instance, see see these blue bars and this green background? When it shoots up in this thrust, you're shorting up here, right? You're shorting, and then you're covering, and then you short and cover in an uptrend, right? <laughs> Herman says laugh out loud. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a zinger to make sure you're awake. No, 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 quite the opposite. Long trades only. Long trades only. Good. And you most of you typed in down, of course. Down is a downtrend, and downtrend is the shorts only. <clears throat> there are some exceptions to that near the open or or uh, or uh, uh, news, you know, news events. Uh, you know, you can let boxes go either way, and, and you know, if you're in the first half an hour trading, you know, you can put a box on and let it go either way. But generally speaking, when you're in a trend, you want to swim with the direction of the market. And then, of course, sideways, 
<clears throat> sideways is also referred to as consolidation. And what you want to do is trade the range. And there are conditions for that, right? Trade, oops, trade the change. Oops, sorry. Trade the range. Trade the range. Getting a little stubby finger here. Long, up, down, short, sideways, range. It's that simple. Now, knowing that, the tough part is knowing what condition you're in at any given time in the market. Now, let me explain what you're looking at. Some of you are brand new and some of you are visiting. So I'm going to just take two seconds and explain what you are looking at here. Now, I am connected to a data feed to my broker. And this is the Russell. We trade uh, crude oil. We trade ES, E-mini S&P. We trade gold. We trade NASDAQ. We trade uh, Russell. E-mini, all $5 a tick. YM, $5 a tick. That's the mini Dow. If we didn't have the Viper indicators on here, you would just see a four-range chart with bars going up and down. So our indicators take the data feed and <clears throat> apply background colors to it. Uh, there's bar colors to it, blue, red, and yellow. There's the bands, the middle band, the mid band, of course. Upper bands, one, two, three, four. Lower bands, one, two, three, four. This line is called line two because it's the top, it's the top of line two, of uh, band two. The bands are numbered sequentially from the bottom to the top. One, two, three, four, mid band. Line two is here. So you hear line two in a, in a short is sometimes used as a trail stop, um, which is where that comes into play. And then above the limit band, you have line, uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six. This is line six because it's the top of band six and then of course seven at the most or uh, top outermost band is by band eight okay now these bands feature prominently in the uh market that we tr markets that we trade there is no zero we start at one yeah we start at one one two line two three four mid band five six line six seven eight eight is the outermost band okay now, you're going to notice that when you are in a sideways market or range bound, the market's going to have a sequence of similar highs and similar lows. And so you're going to, the uh, market's going to look more or less like this. Russell is a good example of overnight, pretty much all night long, was in this range. So let me orient you time wise as to what you're looking at. I'm here in California, so midnight Pacific was right here. All right, so this was the this was the uh, Asian session here, close of the market yesterday afternoon. Asian Asian session, midnight, start of the European session. So Asian session trading here, flat and sideways, range bound market. European session starts at midnight, and European European session goes like such going forward. Now, the equity markets in the U.S. open at, uh, well, before we, before we look at that, let me ask you this question. Two questions in relation to this trading range right here. Let's go back and look at this range before we go forward. I think I, there's a couple of things I need to speak to here before we go forward in regards to the range itself. Now, two things. First of all, another pop quiz, eight seconds on the clock because it's a yes-no question. Is this range tradable, yes or no? Six seconds. Just type in a Y or an N. Bam. Boop. Y or N. That's it. It either it is or it isn't. Four seconds. This range, I'm referring to this range right here on the Russell. Is this range tradable? Does anybody remember the criteria defining what is acceptable trading range? We have criteria for that, right? <clears throat> and does this meet it? Two seconds, yes or no? Just a wire and in. We don't need a whole long dissertation about it. Time's up.
All right. So most of you remember that our minimum criteria to trade a range is 20 to 25 ticks in size. So when looking at this range, we can say support was down around, you know, I don't know, 2150-ish. And resistance was up here pushing around 2450, almost 25. That's close to 30 ticks. So 30 ticks. Is 30 ticks tradable? Yes. So the answer is yes. This is a tradable range. Now, the other question we get coming up all the time, and you face this too in real time, is you say, well, you know, Charles, I'll tell you what. You are the ultimate armchair quarterback because you're sitting all nice and comfy in your office Thursday night. You know, you got a nice tea you're sipping on. Life is good. And you just can say, oh, this was in a range. This was in a range. But you know what, Charles? In real time, I can't see the range. Right? In real time, I can't see it. You're just sitting there saying it. All right. How would we know in real time? Yeah. <laughs> In your exclusive Northern California home, it's like a big fat cat sitting there calling out these ranges. Who do you think you are anyway? All right, let's go back here. Let's answer your question for the skeptics, the skeptics out there. How do you tell a range as it's happening in real time? When, how do you tell? How do you tell? When you're in a range, what do you do? Here, I'll advance the chart. Here, let's go, go all the way back into yesterday. What do you do? You do something to the chart that tells you. And you can do it pretty quickly. What is it that you do? I'll advance the chart. And when you think you know what you do to identify a range, you just type it in. You tell us. I'm advancing the chart. Now, this was yesterday around 9 o'clock on the Russell. You tell the team, what do you do? Here, we're at 10.30 yesterday morning. You got to do something. I'm going to give you a little hint. I'm going to help you. Can you see that, that when you are sideways, the background looks like a striped shirt? Can you see that? That's the first hint. Can you see how it's not a solid color? See how over here, when you're up, it's solid green? And when you're down, excuse me, it's solid red. Striped shirt means sideways. This is visually going to help you. Time's almost up. What are you going to do? What do you do? Support and resistance lines. How soon can you draw support and resistance lines? How many points do you need to draw a support and resistance line? One, two, three, four. How many do you need? At what point can you draw the support resistance lines for to define a, ran, uh, a range? One? One? Do you need one spot? Can one do it? Two? You need at least two. Right. You can't do it with one, obviously. everybody. You can't define a range with one spot. Everybody knows that, right? Okay. Okay, good. So what you do is you take this spot here. Now, keep in mind that... that Resistance, the concept of resistance is, is, a, uh, is an area. It's not an exact spot. So once, these, once the market came up here and hit, 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 you could simply take a line and put it right here, right? Could you do that? Sure. There you go. Bam. Done. All right, there's your resistance line. Cool. Now, you've got a spot down here. Can you put a line down there? Sure. There you go. Boomba. That's it. Now, can that change over time? Can that change over time? Sure. Let's look at Okay, here you went up a little bit above it. Here you went a little bit below it. Here you went a little bit above it. So, so over time, you can adjust a little bit. You tweak your line up a little bit. You pull your line down. Now, it is said that, that as long as a market stays within this range, between these lines, you are said to be range bound. That's how that works. It's literally that simple. You only need two points. As soon as you get two points, you put your lines on your chart, and that's it. As long as you're in this range, you are trading a range if you decide to trade it. It doesn't constantly change. There are times where you can make an adjustment. Like, let's go over here. Okay, here's the morning now. Here's midnight Pacific. This is the Asian session. 
Looks like support came up a little bit. This support's holding here, so you'd adjust that slightly. And then this is a little bit higher, so I put that up there. So now you have a new range. The old range was here overnight, and now the new range is here. You're in that range all morning. See that? Does everybody get, understand this concept? This is really important because the way that you handle these different market conditions drives everything as far as your trade decisions are concerned. Right? So let me ask you a question. When you have a trading range like this, is it a prudent and good idea to take mid-band trades in a range like this, like you see right here, like the Russell was in all night long? Is it a good idea to take mid-band trades in ranges like this? Yes or no? Look at the chart. Think about it for a minute. Four seconds left on the clock. Just a wire and in. Beep. Yes? No. Yes. No. Mid-band trades in a range. Yes or no? Should you be doing them? Three seconds. Generally speaking, no. Why is that? Well, here's the way this works. Okay, if you're going to trade the range, most of you know that in order to get into a range... You, if you're going to buy support and you're going to sell resistance, let's use this range right here as an example. you got to come above resistance to buy or cover your short to get in. And usually that's at least five or six ticks. And to sell the top or profit taking on a long, you have to fade the top if you want to get in and out, right? So you might have to come all the way down into here to trade it. That's as much as 15 ticks. So if you draw a mid-band box, as I've shown here, how much profit is in there to between here and here? And how much profit is in the trade between here and here? Hardly anything at all. Hardly anything at all. Just a few ticks. In fact, by the time you have a little slippage on the trade, slippage is the price of getting in and out between the bid and ask. That can be a tick or two or more. And your commission, you made nothing. The only purpose of make a, person making money is your broker. So here's the rule of thumb, and this is really simple, and it's really easy to remember. If you have a range that's like this, 20, 25, 30 ticks, it's somewhat, somewhat well-defined. And, you know, you can see where you want to get in. You know, maybe you're buying the bottom and taking profit at the top. Maybe it's a downtrend and you're shorting the top, taking cover at the bottom. You know you have to fade that. You're not going to take trades right at the line. You never do that. You've got to come inside by at least four, five, six ticks to get in and out, right? So the meat of the trade in a range actually looks more like this. That's the actual trade itself. Does everybody see that? That's the actual trade itself. So you're not actually getting technically, and that's why we have the rule of 20, 25, 30 ticks. You can see that if you had a you know, very tight, small, to 8, 10, 12, 15 tick range, by the time you got in and out and fade the top with the slippage commission, you just make no money. You make no money at all. There's got to be at least a bigger range. Now, the exception to this is as follows. And I'm not going to dwell on this. I'm just going to say this. if you see this, this could be an exception. Let's say theoretically the range was much bigger. Let's say the range was more like way out here like this as an example. Let's say the range was, I don't know, maybe 50. 40, 50, 60 ticks, well-defined, and there's lots of room between the mid-band and, and way out here somewhere, all right? You got to have at least 10, 12, 15 ticks of meat on the bone on the long and the short side to take a mid-band trade in a big old range. Everybody see that? That makes sense? Tighter ranges, not so much. You just no meat, there's no meat on the bone. There's just no meat on the bone there to get. You're just going to chase yourself around. You're better off looking for another instrument or wait till it breaks up or down. All right, I need to clean this chart off. Is there any questions on what I've shown here? Uh, that's all for this session. Uh, this is all I'm going to talk about in regards to ranges. I'm not going to come back to ranges anymore. So if we're good, I'm going to erase this chart. Tell me if we're good. Where's the, where's the drawing tools? Erase all, remove all. Good. Good, good. Double check. Okay, cool. Gone. There we go. Clean chart. Now, I'm going to ask a question here, and this is something you need to, 
to, to try to work on to try to tell if you've gone from a range condition or an up move to a range condition and or a down move. Okay? I'm going to advance this chart on the Russell right around shortly after 7 a.m. Pacific. And you tell me when you think you see a downtrend. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Got this. Let me take a sip of tea before I start this. Stand by. Let me show you the chart. Hold on. I keep getting a stick on my throat, but uh, it's really quite annoying. <laughs> All right, here's where I'm going to start. Now, let's go back here so you, you, you can see where we were at. 6.30 was right here. So here's the equi uh, uh, equity market open. So it's still pretty choppy in the first half an hour. Here was your range. Remember your range? We had the range. I took all the lines off, so we're not really too confused about that. We get a little bit down through the bottom of the range. We come up. We pause here. Was this? Could, the, could you have boxed this in? Yeah, you could have. I'm not going to talk about this right now. So, so your question was, could you? is that a mid-band box? The answer is yes. And you would have been filled long, and that's a long trade. Okay, let's, we're not talking about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to advance the chart. And when you think you see a short trade, you type in the letter T. All right, I'm going to start it from here. This is right around 7.30. This is today on the Russell. And here we go. In fact, I'm going to, let me blow it up a little bit bigger for the bars. All right, there we go. Here we go. Tell me when you think you see a trend change on here from up to down. Okay, let me blow the bars up even bigger. Okay, now you're at 7.59. You're coming up on 8 a.m. Pacific this morning on the Russell. Are you right at 8 o'clock? Okay, I'm going to stop right there. That's right. That was a mid-band trade. That, or that's, this is a legitimate trade short. So here's the thing. We're going to be together here for about another half an hour or so. And I want this is the most important thing to do. If you remember anything you take away from this webinar, it's going to be this. In, the, in this, whatever stage of development you are in for your trading, you could be a beginner, you could be a novice, you could be an expert. Whatever level you're at, it's totally okay. And what you have to do is this. I wish I could make this bold caps. Learn to see the mid-band trade. If you didn't do anything else, so let's say you didn't know anything about targets and stops, you don't know what a trail stop is, you know what I mean, you know, you, you know, maybe you're okay at seeing trends, trying to figure out the trend, the range, all that kind of stuff. Forget about all that. Do this one thing right here. This is the most important thing to do as far as your trading advancement is concerned. Learn to see the mid-brand trade. If you could practice this one thing over and over and over again, over again, until it is ingrained into your trading mind so that you, it's like breathing. You don't have to think about it. You just see the trade and you take it. Every single person in this room tonight, when these bars came up and kissed this mid-band and rolled over should have typed in the letter T right here. It doesn't get any more clear than this. 
Don't worry. I'm not. I'm not, don't, I'm not like upset or anything. I'm. I'm very passionate about this. Okay. This is. I miss how I make my living trading, teaching. You know, developing this software and trading and teaching and, and trading it myself. You have to learn to see this. If there's anything you learn, it's this right here. This. This will make you money. If you want to make money in trading, learn this right here. This. I mean, look, you can learn all those other trades too. There's all manner of different types of trades. Shallow retraces, deep retraces. You know, you know, there's all kinds of different trades to take. But, you know, if you feel, feel that you're overwhelmed and confused with all these different trades that are coming at you from all over the place, don't worry about them all. Just learn this one. Okay, let's do this exercise again. Lewis says, I've been doing that ever since you said that several weeks ago, and it really has helped turn things around for me when you can identify those mid-bands trade. Thank you. You're welcome, Lewis. It's really heartening to hear that somebody actually listens to what I'm suggesting to do. That's good news. Now, I'm not saying this for my health and well-being. I'm saying it to help everybody. You've got to learn this one trade. I'm telling you, your, your survival as a trader depends on this. Right here, what I'm showing you. Right here, this is it. You want to just boil all the meat off and get it right down to the bone. That's it right there. I mean, I don't know how to make it any more clear than that. When you hear a, a, a mid-band trade in the room, whether it's box it, however you take it, limit orders, market orders, do a backflip and hit the buy button, however you get in, you've got to learn these trades. This one in particular. Now I'm going to do a few more, and then we are going to um, look at the details of how to box these in, because that's the crux of taking a mid-band trade with a box. Everybody's, there's quite a few saying, uh, me too. Very profound. That turned things around for me. Good. Mid-band trades are, are, uh, are, are career makers. I, I don't know how else to say it to you. Let's do another one. Let's do a couple more. I want, me, I want everybody to participate. We've got a ton of people in here tonight. And if you're going to learn anything, you've got to participate. Most of you know, if you, you, most of you, of course, everybody has to go to school, right? At least elementary school. And if you recall, when you were in school, who were the kids that seemed to do the best? Were they the ones kind of sitting in the back, doodling on a piece of paper, sort of half paying attention? Were those the guys getting the A's in the class? Or was it the people up front who were participating every day, listening to the teacher, doing their homework, being diligent about learning what was being taught there? participating lifting up their hand yeah yeah it's the people you got to participate i i do these exercises to help you see what you're looking at so that when in real time these bars are coming at you fast in real time you know what to do you don't just sit there like a deer in the headlights oh what the heck was that? oh geez the trade just came and went all right let's do another couple together you ready here we go This is what I was showing, this mid-band trade right here. All right, let's move on. Some of you got it, some of you didn't. That's all right. We'll do a couple more real quick. All right, so here we're at 814. That trade worked out very, very nicely. Now we're at 820. You're typing in a T when you see another mid-band short. When you see another mid-band short, you type in the letter T. Ready? Here we go. We're at 820. 823, 825, 828, 829. All right, I'm going to stop it right there. Good. Now that's participation. Thank you. That's much appreciated. That shows that you're, you're alert, you're awake, you're paying attention, you're trying to learn something. That's why we do these, right? So this was your thrust. I'm going to focus on just the trade alone, okay? I'm not going to get into all some manner of trail stops and all the rest of that. I'll talk about that in part two. But here was your thrust down from the trade entry here. And if you use line two and stealth, it took you out here, okay? Now you're looking for re-entry. Here we have yellow bars. Now you're going to notice that a lot of times it will come up and kiss the mid-band and roll a little bit. Kiss the mid-band and roll a little bit. Can you put a sell order in here? Absolutely. 
limit sell? If you don't want to draw a box, can you hit market sell? Yeah, of course. Can you draw a box? Sure, it sat there for like five minutes. Was that enough time to draw a little box? Of course it was. There you have it. And I'll get into the details of that shortly. Now, when you have a nice, powerful trend like this, and it's clear, red background, all the bands are stair-stepping down, bars are predominantly red, lower highs and lower lows. In this box, would you have short only, long only, or both? You should just instantly know the answer to that one. In a downtrend, when you draw the box at the mid-band, short only, S, long only, L, B for both. What side of direction of box is activated? Short only. Good. Short only. Now, the reason you do that is that you don't want, there's occasion where, you know, bar might bip up like this. Bars might wick up into here somewhere and dial around, whatever. And if you turn long on, long on or you turn both sides on, you don't, there's no both. No, there's no both. Short only in a powerful downtrend like this because these little bars will head fake you up, sucks you into a long, but banga in your face, you get a full stop out, which is a total double whammy because not only did you get stopped out from a long that you didn't want, whammy number one, whammy number two, you got a deer in the headlight again. Now you're upside down, 12 ticks and whatever, and now you, you should be flipping, taking the short, and you miss the short. Double whammy. Short only. Now, this, this second trade didn't make you very much, but that's okay. Okay, tell you what, we're going to do, let me get off the Russell. I'm going to do, let's get some other charts in here. What, what, other, what other instruments do you want to see to practice on mid-band trades? Let's do some more. Let's do a couple more, and then I'll start blowing up the box itself, and we'll get in a very detailed uh, description of how to take the mid-band trade. What other instruments do we want to put up? What else What else do people trade in here tonight? Just type in a, an instrument you'd like to see, and I'll do my best to get it up. Ooh, a lot of crude traders. Spazzy Nazzy, a lot of crude. Wow, overwhelmingly crude. crude. Okay, let's get crude oil down here. Stand by. Wow, a lot of you know, a lot of crude traders in here. Darn, oh, you darn. You like the crude? Really? Oh, okay. All right. Well, give me one second here. I'll tee up a crude chart for you, for everybody tonight to look at crude. Get the crudy up, crudy. Where are you, crudy? Uh, it's on another screen. Just give me a second, please. I'm trying to move it. You know, ever since I switched my screens around, I, this uh, my cursor has been a real dog to deal with. You know what I mean? Like, it used to go very nicely from screen 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, and now it does some weird 1 to 3 to 2 to 4. I can't – I keep shuffling the, the – uh, anyway, never mind. It doesn't matter. <laughs> my video cards are all messed up. That's it. Neither here nor there. Don't worry about it. I'm loading the crude as we speak, getting the Russell off of the screen. Here comes crude coming to visit you. Loading. Let's get the crudy chart. Here comes crude. It's crude chart for you. Let's do a couple more true, crude trades from today, and we'll exercise our mid-band skills. Yeah, Russell's – the reason I show the Russell, everybody, is I – most of you know, of course, I love the Russell. The Russell is – now, today, for that early range, you know, it was choppy. You know, no question about it. The crude was choppy. It was very choppy. And – um you know, so that was tough. It was tough to get. But then when it broke, it ran. Had a huge run down and a huge run right back up. It was huge. It was just a monster. I'm going to try to go back to the crude pit open at 6 a.m. Pacific and look at trades. Man, there's a lot of bars. Dang. Crudy crude. It's good for you. Crude. Good for you.
Dang, they really ran crude up over the night there, didn't they? Ready? Here we go. Similar exercise. We're looking at crude. The pit open was here. I was not in the room. Gary opens the room at 5.55 before the pit opens, which would have been somewhere right in here. Did you guys, was anybody in there? Did you, did you, did you? Uh, yeah, I'm still married to Russell. <laughs> we have a little queue together. No, I always joke around about that. I love the, the, that Russell instrument. Sometimes it just runs so nicely. It just gives you, it just sits there. It doesn't whip around too much, you know, if it comes to support. I just love that instrument. It's just one, one of my all-time favorites. So a question for the team, for those of you that were, uh, well, early it sucked. Yeah, early it did. And then and then it had its move. You had to fight through that range to, to, to get to it. Um, when... When when Gary opened the room here, did did you guys uh, did he take a trade here, or did you have to wait till this came all the way to the top? Does anybody remember? Yeah, you would the pit, the room would open right in here, and the pit opened like right here. Did you guys pile in this? Did you put a box here and pile in it? You don't know if no, did he? No, there was no pullback. He didn't take that. Yeah, it's because hey, – okay, so so let's go back. Let's recreate this morning and show it. This is – when you came into the room, this is what the market would have looked at, look like. It would look like that right there. Now, we have a rule of thumb. You know, there are occasions where you could break it, but you, for the most part, you really don't want to do that. Um, the rule of thumb is this, is that you're never, ever supposed to trade um, a thrust. So in the case of this, your trade setup for this thrust move actually set up more or less down in here, right? So when you came into the room and you started looking at the data, you were already well into a trade that was thrusting in the up direction. So each of these pullbacks, here's a mid-band box right here. Here's a mid-band box right here. Here's a mid-band box just under it right here. So you're actually, when you open the room, we're in the middle of a thrust. So what he probably did, he's probably, he was probably waiting for a pullback like that, and he just never got it. It just kept going and going and going. You know, could you have thrown a box on here? Sure, you could have. Is there a lot of risk to that? That you know, you get bipped into a trade with a couple of ticks and it pulls right back in your face? Yes. Huh? Oh, this isn't today. Where was where's today? Today's what? Twenty third. Oh, yeah, okay, that was two days ago. That was Monday. What am I showing here? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was going to show some mid-band trades, and I went all the way back to the 21st. Wake up here. Wake up. Wake up, man. Wake up. All right, here's today. Hold on. Stand by. Good call. Nice catch, James. <laughs> Sorry about that. There's today. Today is right here. That was the other day. That would have been like two days ago. Okay, there you go. There you go. There's today. There's 823. Yeah, okay, so 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 555 was actually right here. Right there. There you go. So this is what the market would have looked like. Uh, I don't know. I, oh, was he shorting up in here? Was he taking shorts? Is he short? Anybody remember what he did this morning? Were these, did he take shorts up here? Came down, broke down? Some of you might not remember. Some of you might not have been in the room, and that's okay. That's all right. Looked like you were a little bit range bound. You were sort of sideways to down, right? Looks like it was sideways to down when, when the pit came to open. Yeah, okay, he shorted those rollovers, or just caught one of them. Let me see if I can find a mid-band trade that we can all do together on crude. Oh, I see one. Okay, you ready? Let's do one together. Okay, you ready? We're gonna do it. We're gonna do. It. Now, everybody. Oh, we had a box here, 555, and he cut that little short. Okay. Yeah. Next exercise, mid-band trade on crude. When you see a mid-band trade, you type it, excuse me, the letter T. 
We're right at 7 a.m. Pacific, so the crude pit's been open for almost an hour, about an hour. And the market comes up. There's 7.02. Remember, when you see a trade, you type in the T. Seven seventeen, seven twenty three. Pull the bars up real big for you. Seven twenty five. Seven twenty six. Seven thirty. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there. Wow, good participation. Thank you, everybody. Total kudos. Chris was first. Mario, Vin. Bill, James, Shane, jumping in there. Hey, Shane, how's it going? John, Lauren, Lewis, everybody, good for you. Toby, Brian, Herman, fantastic. Now let's discuss the anatomy of a mid-band box. What's the good, the bad, and the ugly? What is the good, the bad, and the ugly? What does that mean? Let's talk from the most ideal to the least ideal. Now, if you look at the anatomy of a box, it should look something like this. I'm going to really blow this up so you really know exactly what I'm talking about here. You have to know where to establish the top and the bottom of a box if you're going to put a region at a mid-band. Most of the time when a bar has come close to the mid-band, they're going to turn yellow. Not always, but most of the time they're going to turn yellow. When you're in a downtrend, the bars are red, and then they will come around the band, and they will turn yellow. When you're in an uptrend, the bars are predominantly blue, and when they come to the mid-band, they're going to turn yellow. Now, as a market is retracing, how do we know when the market is done retracing? I'm going to do it this way. You tell me where you want to put the top of the box. I'm going to gradually... So you're going to you're going to type in um S for stop. Okay? I'm going here's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to put a line here that's going to represent what will be the top of the box. And when you think you see where the top of the box should should be located as I move this line around, you type in an S for stop. Ready? Okay, I'm going to move it from bar to bar. Here we go. Okay, it actually starts up here at this peak. Here. 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 Now that's all the bars in the sequence. I can't go any lower than that. I'd say 80% of you typed in an S when I paused the line right here. And in my view of this of this of this uh price action, that would be the proper location for the top of the box right there. So what happens is is that is that there are different uh, consolidation patterns that occur on the mid band. Let me put a box actually around it so you see what I'm talking about. Now, in terms of size, this is probably one of the larger boxes in terms of acceptability. Generally, you want to see a box be somewhere around 8 to 10 ticks. Occasionally, it'll be, it'll be a little larger than that. This one starts at 52 and ends at 61, so this is 9 ticks. This is sort of at the upper end of acceptability. Most boxes, ideal boxes, would be tighter, more like this. You want to see a box be something more like that, you know, like six ticks, six, seven, eight ticks. Nine ticks is okay. When you get up pushing 10, you get over 10, like over here, this is not an acceptable box, just to, just to be clear. If you're saying, well, what's an acceptable box and what's an unacceptable box, this would be too big. See this? That's not a good box. This box right here would be, you know, like, you know, 47 to 72, 15 ticks. This is not, that's not a good box. That's not acceptable. That's not a good box. This is at the upper end of acceptability, eight ticks. So what I'm doing, here's what I'm doing as the market is retracing. By the way, we have another tool. 
we have a line and array tool that if you didn't want to draw a box itself, you could have actually drawn a line like that, like a like a like a downtrend retracement line. And when that's broken, so for instance, in the in the in the using the line or the ray tool, you would be long on this bar right here. Now the other way to get in would be bar close. And depending on where you turn on bar close, see now the, the, the issue that you run into with bar close is that you can have a lot of bars that sort of bounce around in here. And depending on where you turn it on, wherever it closed up, you would get long. And there are instances where you'll get filled inside of a box, inside the box, and then you're long and it continues down into here and you take a stop out. Generally speaking on these types of trades, I don't use bar close. I would use a bar close if the market's moving really fast. It comes and touches the resistance or support area and flips off of there, and I don't have time for a box, or maybe you don't even a market order, and I just want to hit bar close, and I'll get in on a close, and it flips, and you're in. But that's more of an exception, not the rule. Let's go back and discuss the top of the box again, because why is the top of the box important in this, in this, in this instance? I'm going to clean this off again so we can go back to what we're doing here. Drawing tools, remove. Why is the top of the box so important? Why did I do that exercise? Why did I take the time to draw a line and have you call out where the top of the box? Why even do this? It's just a waste of time. Just moving a line around. What, what the heck was that all about? Why am I trying to figure out where the top of the box is? What difference does it make? Why even draw the box in the first place? What are you talking about? Well, isn't the top of the box where... If the bar closes outside above it, that you actually get long. So is the top of the box in a long trade pretty important? Is it? Well, yeah, it's everything. <laughs> I mean, the top of the box is to drive where you get long in the trade. <laughs> it's everything. The bottom of the box doesn't matter in a long trade, in a long box off a long trend. The bottom does not matter because you don't, you're not getting short. It doesn't matter where the bottom is. I mean, I like to make a nice clean box like this. I like to line it up with the bottom. Now, if you look at these candles, um, I'm going to take an arrow, and you tell me when you think that the bars are no longer going down and they've reversed and started to go back up. That's right, Lewis. If, if 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 for some reason this was an unbiased box, say that you're you know right at the open on an inequity and it's sitting here, it's been up and it's been down, and you want to take it and you think it could go either way, then the top and the bottom both matter. Yes. Now I'm going to do this exercise real quick. You tell me when you think this retracement has stopped going down and is now going back up. I'm going to give you three choices, A, B, C. This bar is A, this bar is B, and this bar is C. When does this retracement stop going down? and start to head back up. Which one of the three bars? A, B, or C? Just type in a letter. Time's up. C. C. Can you see C? So let's let's really get let's really get into this, okay? Because this is really important. This is part of the whole box drawing at the midband thing that I said was so important and critical to learn. This is really really important, okay? Can you see that for the most part, when the retracement, most of these bars are closing down. See how they're closing down in the retracement? Down, down, doji, down, doji. Many many times you'll get a doji candle at the apex of the retracement, either up with a big wick up or a big wick down, or a big wick up, and closing at the top of the body of the bottom of the candle. I could put zigzag on here. I could put the zig on. I'm not going to do that, though. Uh, you could, Ben. Yeah. Gary uses that lightning thing. 
That's another way to do it. That would help you see it. Absolutely. I'm not going to do that, though. I want you to just look at the candles. Now, can you see that this, in terms of the swing level, can you see that it was pushed down? It's a little bit, a little bit of an A, B, C, D, E kind of thing. Is it got a thrust? B, C. C was coming down. So each candle, for the most part, was closing and, and hitting a lower level until this candle right here. Right there. Can you see the difference between these, say these three or four candles and this candle and these candles? See how they're trying to close up? So what does this mean? What are all these candles trying to close up? What, is that, what does that mean? Why do we even care about this? Why are we even talking about it? What is the difference between all these candles that are going down like this and these ones right here? What is the difference between here? these candles and these candles what relevance does it have to the long trade trade that we are trying to take are they the same does it matter good momentum the buyers are coming in Price pressure is starting to push up. Good. Good. When you see a doji candle in a retracement and it pushes and gets a dot like that in real time, and then you see a bar close up like this, this is starting to tell you that the momentum is no longer in retracement mode. Buying pressure is starting to move in, and the bars are starting to want to close up. So in an uptrend, what this means is that the 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 momentum of this downward retracement has run out of gas profit taking has stopped equilibrium is being reached between buyers and sellers and the buyers are trying to reinsert themselves to push the market higher for more profits on the long side it would really behoove everybody who is listening to this to learn this pattern now it doesn't always set up like this you don't always get, what do we get, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine candles, and then it closed up and got you long right here. Sometimes this pattern can be as simple as three. You can only get two, two or three or four candles, and you can form this pattern. Down, down, doji, up, out of the box. Down, doji, up, out of the box. Three, can have two, can have three. It can have ten. You don't know at the time that it's happening. All you can do is interpret what's happening by putting a region box around here and learning to see this. Now, in this particular case, the reason I'm spending so much time on this is so that you just burn this into your mind. It entered the retracement box arguably around 722 and change. And then it sat here and didn't break out until 728, almost 729. How long did it take for this box to form? The dot shows in real time, John, when that doji finished, when this doji finished, this candle, that dot appeared right there. Same with these. See this doji up here? When that, do, when that bar finished forming and the doji was done, the dot appears. Same here. See all the dots? Seven minutes. Six and a half, seven minutes. It's, is six minutes enough time to draw a box? I think so. You could have run out and made a pot of coffee, come back and drawn the box, if you had one of those instant brews. You know, the one with the little bullets you put in there. All right, good. I think everybody sees this. Do everybody understand? Now, now let's go do one before we run out of time. I want to do a short box. Any questions on this? I'm gonna go. Let's go do a short box. I don't want to run out of time before I show a short box. I'll show it on crude. I'll find a short box. You could build a box. That's right, Walter. You could go to your to your toy store and buy a cardboard box and actually assemble the box. <laughs> I'm kidding around. You get the point. You get the point. Let me see if I can find a short box. Maybe there wasn't any short trades on crude. The point is this. Is I'll tell you, if you could just take a chart, you, you don't even have to spend a lot of time doing it, really. You just don't. I mean, you could just... You know, I mean, just scroll back and forth, just back and forth, back and forth. Here, I'll show you, just like this. 
just like this, just exactly like this, back and forth, looking for trades. Looking for trades. Does anybody see any long trades on here? Anybody see any mid-band boxes? How many mid-band boxes on this chart right now? You got five seconds. How many mid back, but how many mid box longs are on this chart right now? Four seconds. Type in a number. Bam! You should just look at it and bam! No, not even think about it. Bam! One, two, three, four. How many long mid band boxes are on this chart? Two seconds. Time's up. Because here's the thing: sometimes they sit, sometimes they sit there for a while, and sometimes they don't. And if you're if you're sort of taking your time thinking about them, you know, you're probably going to miss them. So you got to instantly see where they are. Here's one right here. That's one. Here's here's another one right here. That's two. Could you make the case that this was one? This was pretty close. If you said two or three, I'd say you were right on. I don't see four. Because there's nothing over here. See, you know, this was this was, this was your thrust going to an uptrend. Now, okay, part B of the same question. This is a yes/no question with five seconds on the clock. Is this an acceptable box by our standards for a long? Yes or no? A Y or an N? Five seconds on the clock. Yes or no? Is that acceptable box? Bamba. Clock is ticking. You know the criteria. You know the criteria. What is it? Yes or no? Minimum criteria met, you type in a Y. Minimum criteria not met for entry long, this is a pop quiz for those of you that have been coming to all those other webinars where I showed this. Three seconds on the clock. Real simple question. Y yes, boom, and no. One second left. Time's up. Well, let's take a look at it. What is our minimum criteria for retracement in a trend? It has to close, in the case of a long, below the stealth line, which is our green sneaky snake line here. That's the stealth. We've had that for, since we started business nine years ago. This has been with us forever. And line six has to close below both of those to meet the minimum criteria in a long trade. Does it close below stealth? Check mark one. Does it close below line two, six? Check mark two. Acceptable box? Yes. This was a yes. 947? This was a box. We said that, Toby. This was not a mid band box. Yeah, so the question was I can't remember. Was my question was my question a mid band box? Yeah, my question was mid band, right? So it, it so this, that's why I said it was part B. Uh, it, this was borderline. Technically speaking, if you want to say mid-band trade, if you want to say mid-band trade, and by the strict adherence to the letter of the law, it technically should touch or go above or above, right on the mid-band. So from a technical point of view, mid-band box, yes. Mid-band box, yes. Two. This one, ah, almost got it, so you're on the cusp. So that's why I said either two or three. Acceptable retracement, very close within a couple of ticks of the mid-band. So it's a judgment call on that one in terms of whether it qualifies as a mid-band box. This one definitely did not qualify as a mid-band box. However, that was not the question. The question was, did it meet the minimum criteria for an acceptable long box? And the answer is check mark yes. Does everybody understand the difference? It's subtle but important to know the difference, right? This is what's called a shallow retracement. So it's just, it's not pulling back enough. There's a prof, sufficient profit taking for the longs to not push it all the way down here. But it has, remember the criteria, it's got to come through stealth, close below stealth, and line six in an uptrend, and these bars did that. So yes, this was a good box, but not a mid-band box. Yeah, no, this was an acceptable mid-band box right here, this one. This was the first one. This was a shallow retracement. First mid-band was actually right here on this chart. Everybody get that? Yeah, okay, I got to move on. I wanted to show, I wanted uh, before I run out of time, I want to show a short box. And I'm trying to find one on crude, but crude's been going up for like the past week. I can't find any shorts. It's all up. I mean, it's just it's literally straight up. There's got to be a downtrend on here somewhere. Maybe I have to go to another chart. 
I might have to go to another chart. I'll be darned. Give me one more minute. Yeah, it's just up, up, up. I'm sorry, everybody. It's just up. There's no downtrend to this silly thing. All right, let's let's look for it. Let's look. Let's do. Let's go somewhere else. Uh, I know where I can find one. I know where I can find one. Stand by. Stand by one. Hang tight. I know where I can find a couple. I know where I can find a couple. All right, here we go. You ready? I'm going to show a YM chart. And when you think you – I'm going to help you out. There was in a downtrend from about 7.30 through almost 9 o'clock. And there were sufficient retracements to get short. So let's do a short uh, uh, trade entry. It doesn't necessarily have to be a mid-band. You may or may not see a mid-band retracement trade. But when you think you see a short trade entry, I'm going to advance the chart. You type in the letter T, signifying, or you can type in an S for short, T for trade. And I'm going to start showing the YM chart right now. You ready? Here we go. The letter S for short or the letter T for trade. Either one is acceptable. And you're at 819. I'm going to start advancing the chart on YM. Eight nineteen, eight twenty, eight twenty one, eight twenty three. Blow up the bars real big so you can see them real good. Remember, you're looking for shorts. This is a downtrend, right? Downtrend. You're looking for shorts. Eight twenty five, eight twenty eight, eight thirty five, eight thirty eight. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. Good. Now let me show you where the T started showing up from the team on this exercise on spotting short retracements on where to get in. Many of you typed in a T when these bars formed right here, and that was correct. Right here. The close of, now in the case of the shorts, you're closing above red stealth, which is in downward mode. The background is red. Bars are predominantly red, but uh, mid-band and all the bands are stair-stepping down like you're going on a set of stairs to the basement. Yes? It's got to close above red stealth and line two. Here you came almost to the mid-band within, I'm going to guess, like three, four ticks of the mid-band right here. Notice you get almost a little bit of a doji. And our dot painted. And we put in a swing here, and this was the first short, yes. Okay. Some of you then, subsequent to that, typed in a T here, and that was correct. This is another entry. And then a big chunk of you typed in another T when these bars formed right here, and that was also correct. So there were three entries here, three short entries. Now, can you see that the dynamics of each of these boxes is a little different? However, what is the same between these three short trades? What is the similarity between the three? It's obviously not the number of bars, right? Bars are all different. Quantity of bars. What is the same? And this is true of almost, almost, not every, not 110%, but it's pretty darn close to 100%. It's a very high percentage. What is the same thing on all of them? You want me to give you a hint? You want a little hint? Did 
Did every one of them have almost like a little bit of a doji with a dot? Did all of them have that? Hmm? Did all of them have it? Yeah. Yeah, they did. They all closed above stealth in, the, in line two. That's true. Yes. And they all had the dot where the doji painted. Good. So what, I, what I'd like to do, this is your homework, um, should you choose to accept it. I know we're all grown-up adults in here, so, I mean, you know, it's your call. But, you know, one thing that you can do, just a really simple thing that you can do every day, either before the market opens to sort of give yourself a little mind exercise, or after the market closes, or throughout the course of the day, you get an extra spare 10 minutes and your charts are up, just scroll back and forth. No, the dot paints right when the doge when that when that bar finishes and closes, the dot paint paints right there. Look at it tomorrow in real time, Ben. Just scroll back and forth. Just like this. Just literally like this. Just look at it. Watch for retracement. See that it came down and retraced. See that? See it retrace? Did these bars close above line two and six? Yes. How would you know that? If you did this about a thousand times, over and over again, in your mind, you go down. Was any of this a trade? No. Not sufficient retracement. If you didn't get in this short trade, from, you had to wait for a pullback. That's why in the room sometimes, did you ever hear how sometimes we get really frustrated if a market starts, like, flips and rips in the other direction and we miss it? That's because we're waiting for a retracement, and sometimes it doesn't come. You know, that's the most frustrating about this trading methodology. But I'll tell you, it's worth it because if you chase some of these, you know, what it is is you chase, you get in short down here at the bottom, pulls back 20 ticks in your face and stops out, now you're chasing the thing around. You just have to be patient wait for the pullbacks. They will come. They definitely will come. But just scroll back and forth. Is that a trade? No. Scroll back and forth. Is that a mid-band box? Yes. Scroll back and forth. Just do that over and over each day for 5, 10, 15 minutes. You don't have to sit there all day long and do it. Now, if you do that exercise enough, all these trades will start to become clear to you. You'll just look at them and you'll say, wow, how could I have not? My eyes are awake and like a bell went off. I see exactly what to do. All right, Lewis, have a good one. Let me stop the recorder. Any final questions? Uh, 